Starting and running a business is hard, but you don't have to do it alone. Whether you're an established business owner or thinking about starting a side hustle to earn extra income, I am here to teach you how to show up as your unfiltered self, level up your business, and thrive as a mompreneur. Let's embrace the chaos and start enjoying the journey together. I'm Amy Tra, and you're listening to the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. Welcome back into the Motivated Mompreneur Podcast. I am talking with Riley June today, and I'm really excited for this conversation because what we are going to talk about is something I think we've all done, myself included. And before we dive into that, though, I would love to welcome in Riley. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Amy, so much for having me. I'm excited to pour into you and your audience today and just have such a beautiful conversation. Yes, but before we dive in, tell us more about yourself, who you are and what you do. Yeah, so my name is Riley June. Um, I am a transformation life coach. I actually run two separate businesses. So on one end, I do transformation life coaching and I have collaborated with a holistic practitioner to do any of the clinical testing to actually figure out what's physically going on in your body And then I come in and handle the emotional, the mental, and the spiritual and behavioral aspects of really, truly helping you heal in eight months or less. And on the other side of my business, I do coaching, consulting, and training. And so I really love the combination of being the coach, being the entrepreneur, helping people thrive in their lives. And I knew that, so originally I did both of these under one umbrella, and I realized that as we grow in our businesses, it's so important to really speak to the right people. And so I ended up separating these companies and it's been so much fun being able to help people start up, grow and uh, evolve in their technical skills in their coaching business. But also, as you know, we don't have anything if we don't have our health. So being able to collaborate with someone who can bring on that truly powerful component, which is healing the body and then equally support them in the mind and the spiritual work as well. And so that's a bit about what I do. And it has been such a beautiful journey to this point for sure. It is like a crazy journey when you think about it. And what I love that you mentioned is that you don't have anything if you don't have your health. And isn't that true? You know, that is one of those things that we all tend to take for granted that, okay, you know, one day I'm going to retire and then I'll do this, that, and the other. Well, nothing's guaranteed. I mean, any one of us could, you know, become ill or not be able to, you know, work in the same capacity that we are currently tomorrow. You know, we can't take it for granted. So I love that you incorporate that in because it is so needed, especially as parents. Yeah. I honestly couldn't agree more. And it's actually funny. I was scrolling on Instagram and I saw this Grant Cardone reel and he was saying, you know, okay, if I gave you a million dollars tomorrow, like, you know, what would your life be like? He's like, oh, it'd be so great. And, you know, I wouldn't worry about what people say. And I just kind of just give her for a while, you know, and be smart and invest it. And then he's like, okay, what about 10 million? He's like, oh yeah, absolutely. Hands down. I'd take it. My life would be great. And he's like, okay, what if I gave you that $10 million, but you couldn't wake up tomorrow? He's like, oh yeah, no, I wouldn't take that. Not at all. And he's like, okay, so what you're saying is life is more important than money. And the guy was like, yeah, absolutely. And he's like, why aren't you waking up every day like that? And I really view, you know, the world, the realm of entrepreneurship and our health, you know, individually, but also in- incorporated in that the same way is that you know, it's so easy to chase the money and the glamour and the glitz and and equally the service, right? We go into this because we've found something that we realize we can fill a gap or void in. But along the way, we tend to, there tends to be this the kind of shift that happens at different points of the entrepreneur journey where we are so all in on service, but then there comes this like sneaky part of it where we start chasing the money, though we do genuinely love the service. And what ends up happening is our health suffers. And I actually did a reel on this yesterday where it was talking about, you know, are you in a trauma cycle? And the way to be able to really uh, become aware of that is if at the expense of everything, your health is what's suffering most. And it's so true because when you heal those subconscious wounds within you, and this 
is where I love the coaching aspect to really become aware of these patterns and behaviors for yourself, but also the healing elements of it to be able to go to the root and deal and navigate and, and work through that is if you heal the subconscious wounds, so let's say the need to be um, seen or loved, you won't chase status and you actually won't chase money. You'll love it and you'll value it to the point of it obviously sustains life. We can't pretend like we don't need it as much as we want to pretend it's just energy. It is also a commodity, right? But it won't be the prime, it won't be something that you stress out about because you're so rooted in your mission. And this is where I used to do a lot of new age work. And I realized that at the foundation of everything, God exists. And so for whoever's listening, you know, take that for where that is with you. But I realized when I continue to dig deeper, you know, what's bigger, greater, and more grander and beautiful. And I found God in that. Um, it was like, okay, I don't need to constantly stress about my bills or if this launch is going to go well, or, you know, if I'm going to work through this, I put my health first, my disciplines surrounded that. And I realized that even for myself, I was breaking out of trauma cycles uh, because I really was leading with um, making sure that I was taken care of first. Yes. Oh my gosh. It, and when we stop chasing and really remove money from the equation. I mean, that right there is such a game changer in life, in business, in just everything that we're doing. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, Amy, I can even say that I understand, I'm not naive to the fact that sometimes we do genuinely build businesses because we're desperate. And I have been in those positions before in my life. But honestly, when I started putting my faith in my health first, that desperation started to dissipate because I realized that everything I was doing was for a bigger purpose. And it truly was the step needed to be able to surrender. Everyone talks about surrendering, right? And so it really was, it was prioritizing my health and prioritizing my faith. And it started to melt away the stress truly. Guys, and it's not to say that life is always going to be rainbows and butterflies, but doing those two things, it really does make things easier when you take the time to prioritize your health and do the inner work to do the healing. Yes, then you can, you know, fully just lean in and embrace the process and trust in, you know, God, the universe, whatever you believe in, wherever you're at that makes such a difference. And like you said, it just lets that stress melt away. And, you know, going into this too, is being a conscious parent, you know, when we're not stressed out, that better allows us to be more fully present. So what is conscious parenting? Mm, I love this question. And honestly, it's so, so true. So conscious parenting is really this idea of being more self-aware of how you show up for your children. If, if I'm going to summarize it in the most like simplistic way, it is truly that it's being aware of how you show up for your children. And you know, when we go through that inner work and we do that, that healing work, I always say, if you want to heal faster, become an entrepreneur <laughs> because yeah. it's going to bring up everything so much faster. Um, and that was truly, that's truly been my journey. And I have yet to meet a client where that's not the case for them either. But um, as you become self-aware and you start really doing that inner work, you know, you realize that there's beliefs and there's conditions and there's behaviors and there's emotional imprints that take place in your life that you subconsciously weren't aware of. So if you've ever grown up hearing, you know, money is the root of all evil, or I've got 99, or yeah, I've got 99 problems, but fill in the blank isn't one, or, you know, there's just all these little sayings that we pick up on. It's it's one of those things where it's like on the tip of your tongue, and then it just mm -hmm. goes away, and it'll come back in the middle of a sentence later. But anyways, um, or, you know, you think, um, I only can have this because this is where I'm at. I used to, my dad used to say things like, you know, sometimes this is just what you get in life. And so we pick up these, these phrases and, or we hear these phrases, but what we pick up is the behaviors and we adopt them. And so from zero to seven years old is where we primarily um, imprint our characteristics and our main core beliefs in ourselves and our lives and how we're going to then live out society and be a, a 
productive member in, in society, so to speak. And so when we go through that entrepreneur journey or we're doing that inner work, we start to realize, oh, no, I don't actually believe this. I don't believe money is the root of all evil, or I don't believe this is just what I get in life, or, you know, I, I don't actually believe these things. I, I realize that this, that it could be different or that I'm actually different than that. And so when we apply it to conscious parenting, we become aware when we do things or say things or respond in certain ways based off of uh, self-limitations or subconscious wounds from ourselves. And so before the show, like we were talking, um, one I said yesterday, the other day to my son was, you know, Philip, you're really lucky that mom and dad are home all the time. You know, there's a lot of kids who go to daycares or, um, child care, spend time with other people, and they hardly get to see their parents, especially during the week. Their parents are busy working. And he kind of just looked at me like, okay, like, what does that mean? And like went on his merry way and just kind of was disappointed because he wanted to, he wanted to do something with me, but I was, you know, in the midst of running a business and doing all the things and, you know, honestly making excuses. I mean, there's times where I genuinely have clients and I can't just like not have the client to go do things with my kids. But, uh, you know, so conscious parenting, I realized that by me saying that he's never going to know that other reality, that that was just something that I grew up with, that that was my reality. And for him, as a child developing, he's six, so he's right in that that finalizing stage of really um, picking up on, or I guess integrating or ingraining what he's going to believe in his life going forward, and how that's going to affect how he responds and shows up as a young or as an older child, a teenager, and then a young adult. And for me, I realized I need to start setting a little bit more time aside for him, that he is clearly coming to me with a very um, well-deserved need. He deserves my time. And there can be time that I make throughout my day or a couple times a week where I'm just more intentional with spending that time with him. Because if I don't, and I just keep brushing it off as like, you should be luckier for this reality you'll never know, um, that he's going to grow up creating habits and personal beliefs and emotional wounds surrounding not feeling loved and seen. And for me, it was a really big aha moment to just really look at the way that I'm showing up for him. And he's one of four of my children. So this was just like one moment where I was applying it. Right? All my kids are so different. Um, but that's that's really conscious parenting in a nutshell. It's just being more hyper aware. It's not because you need to overanalyze everything, right? Like we're humans, we're not perfect. We don't need to be like, oh, did I do this right? I mean, we do enough of that anyways. But just in those moments where your children are coming to you with needs, are you brushing it off based off of your reality of how you grew up? Um, or you can you pause and really just do a little bit of self-reflection. It took me all of like maybe five minutes to be like, hmm, how can I improve this? And move forward from that and just genuinely follow through with it. Oh, that's so good because th- we've all been there. We have all done that where we just go into reactive mode and we don't even realize what we're doing because we're just in the moment. We're just reacting. We're just trying to get through the day. But the self-awareness, when you really have that self-awareness of yourself that you can pause and really, you know, analyze the situation, that right there can be such a game changer. I just, I love it. Absolutely love it. And you are interested. Oh, yeah. I was just going to say, and even just thinking about, right, so me having that breakthrough in that moment, that split second where I was like, huh. He's actually never going to know that other reality that I'm trying to just impose gratitude on for him. It can absolutely change the course of even the type of people that he seeks out for friends, for the types of relationships he has with other women, right? I think about, you know, by me just uh, assuming that he should be grateful for this life he'll never know or have. What type of woman is he going to look for in a partner growing like later in his life? 
And I would want it to be someone who does put his needs first, not just brushes off, oh, I have work or I have this. And that he just knows that that's normal and acceptable when when it really truly isn't, right? And so that's a part of course correcting generational cycles or generational wounds or, you know, as, as rooted as generational trauma, because that was something that I stopped in me from my parents, where they were just always brushed off and it was just normal to just go and do and play with yourself and not, uh, you know, partake in your parents actually nurturing you or sitting with you or being attentive to you. And so for me wanting to, or being that, that break in that cycle for him, it is important to validate and nurture that need where he just needs a little bit more time with me. And it doesn't have to be a whole day activity every day but that I could even fulfill 20 minutes a day or a few times a week of doing something rewarding, even if it's a walk together, just him and I, right? And so I think that that's really important for my entrepreneur moms listening is your the reason you started your business independently was to be able to have more time with your kids. And there comes a point where we can get very lost in the service and the building, because let's not pretend that it's not a lot of work (laughs) and the chasing. And we actually kind of forget to step back and nurture the reasons why we started in the first place, which was our kids. Yes. And I love how you touched upon generational beliefs because I feel like that's something a lot of us are going through right now. I know that I was of the generation where we saw this big shift from stay at home moms to the working moms. And in a way, I feel like society's taught us that we have to work like we don't have to parent and parent like we don't have to work. And so it's very conflicting and causes a lot of these uncomfortable feelings for us because we're trying to do two full-time roles. I mean, just being a mom is a full-time job in and of itself and then trying to build a business. So it is so important to try and, you know, navigate each other and have the awareness to know how to do that. So how do you navigate motherhood and running a business? What boundaries do you have into place so that you can be fully present in both? Yeah. Oh, this is such a good question. So there's two things that I really want to preface within that. And one is breaking out of society's condition. And two, work-life balance is about intention, not a specific set of time or activities. And so the first one is that when the uh, money system shifted in 1975 and they went from, they pulled away from being backed by a gold standard, the rules and game of money really shifted where debt actually becomes more of a leverage or vantage point than having a savings account. And I'm not going to get too much into it because it's just something you just have to learn about and take the time to learn about more of yourself. But um, when that happened, that's where we started to see the era of moms going to work and and being pulled away from valuing being that homemaker and that stay-at-home mom raising our kids. And so society did this to put more money in the government's pockets. And, you know, the government's a business. We can't be naive to the fact of that. But as a mom, our priority is whether you went into motherhood intentionally or it happened uh, consequently, if you've chosen to take on that role, that is the most vital role that we could possibly play, period above the bills, above chasing our dreams, above anything. And I know that when we get into the world of personal development, there comes this kind of duality where we got to hold space for our dreams and, you know, becoming someone and doing something and not putting ourselves on the back burner. But our children aren't um, young for very long, right? By the time that they're six, seven, eight years old, they're relatively taking care of themselves. And if in those most crucial ages and stages of their development, we put forward our values and priorities, we lose sight of truly genuinely our mission, which is to raise the next generation. 
And once they get to about seven, eight years old, we equally are conditioned to send them off to a glorified babysitter, which is school. And so if you're a parent who needs to work in school, is that that opportunity for you? Like, I get it. I'm not trying to, uh, for lack of better words, I guess, like poop on the, the mom who does truly work for whatever reasons that she chooses to and her kids go to school. But for us, we chose to homeschool because we realized that in what we value as a family and being that conscious parent that we want to be not necessarily in control of what our kids learn and what they're subjected to, though that is part of it. It was more so them growing up to learn who we are as equally our children are our greatest teachers. And so we wanted to be able to have that extended time with them. And just with the way that the world is going, be able to actually teach them important skills like do you know how to garden? That's our science class. Do you know how to be a productive member in, in our community? Let's look at volunteering options. Let's look at where we can take part in the church more. So my kids are really young, so they don't really do much volunteering, but they get to watch us be a part of that. And so it's that's our social studies, you know? And so just really more so molding them to be genuine human beings that put community and the value of health and self and helping first. And, you know, this also in a way protects them from a lot of the things surrounding bullying and what goes on. But equally, that was just another layer of the societal condition. And so for being a mom who is also an entrepreneur who values chasing dreams and helping other people, I have to really look at where my values and where my goals are or dreams or desires are and always pause and put what I am doing first, which really at the root of it is raising another generation. And when you look at it like that, not only does it put way more pressure on you <laughs> as a person, right? And we're trying to like, we're over here, we're doing the inner work, trying to like depressurize ourselves, right? I feel like a crock pot sometimes, but it's also like that when you put that as your priority, again, another uh, insulator to help that stress melt away. Because now you're actually listening when your kids come up to you and say, Hey, I want to do something. And you're trying to brush it off. Like, no, you should be more grateful. You don't have to do this. And it's like, Nope, actually he has a need that he's coming to me with. And this doesn't have to be something crazy. It could even just be involving him in helping me to cook dinner. Right. And so it's again, developing that skills with them, being more attentive to them, not having to sacrifice my goals and my dreams, but really making what is most important in this time, the true priority. And so for work-life balance, it becomes more about intentionality and incorporating them than it does just kind of, oh, I'm just flustered. I got to get dinner ready. It's like slow down. Same with the laundry, right? It can be a super big hassle. Honestly, the amount of women that I work with where laundry and dishes are their like biggest stress or at least their trigger points, right? It's like, I'm actually going to take a little bit longer to do this and I'm going to bring my kids with me and I'm going to help them or teach them how to fold clothes. My daughter's three. She kind of just throws things in piles, but my son, he'll slowly, he'll fold a couple of shirts and pants. He doesn't stay and do it all with me, but I'm also teaching them a skill to take care of the things that they have and to organize their life as well and ultimately themselves. So um, it was a long-winded answer, but I hope that that really covered it. So Oh, that's beautiful because yes, our children are our biggest teachers. It's crazy when you take that step back and get out of the hustle mode for a moment and you just look at life and how fast it goes. I mean, it is absolutely insane. Just think about it. I mean, the year 2020, that seems like it was yesterday, right? Okay, that was what, 23 years ago now. That is absolutely crazy to me. You know, I still feel like the events of 9-11, I can like picture exactly where I was, what I was doing. That wasn't, you know, that many years ago. This isn't possible. But life moves so quickly and they are only young for such a short period of time. And you're absolutely right. Our job as a mom is to be providing us with these life skills because we are raising another generation. So if enough of us can pour into our kids and, you know, really develop this awareness, what a great generation is coming up. I mean, it, it truly is incredible. And we can start to break some of these 
um, just toxic generational patterns and beliefs that we've all been conditioned to think that, you know, these external things are what's most important. You know, we're constantly chasing the shiny object. I just want to say that for the mom who's listening right now and she's building her dream and she's raising her kids, honestly, if I could give you any advice is just first start with grace because I, you know, it might sound like I figured it out, but I haven't figured it out. I got to apply these same things that I'm saying every single day. And sometimes it's like the, your biggest enemy is truly yourself. So it's like, even though you know it, I feel like the more self-aware you become, the harder it gets because you're like, ah, why did I do that? I know better. (laughs) So really just give yourself some grace along the way. Um, I always say to my clients with kids is your kids are going to have to heal from something anyways, just try and do a little bit better each day. So (laughs) I love that because yeah, we are all just trying our best every day and it's not easy. I don't have it all together either. You know, I call myself a chaos coordinator. I'm just, you know, it's just like anything, you know, we're, we're practicing as we go. You only learn through failing and trying over and over and over. So yes, give yourself some grace and just keep showing up. Like, I think sometimes we're just too hard on ourselves. (laughs) It's so true. It's so true. Um, So yeah, absolutely lead with that grace. And so if you're on all things self-healing journey, you're really becoming more aware of yourself, your life, your patterns, your behaviors, how you're responding. You're going to want to come and visit me on True Point Healing on Instagram. I'm on in, I'm on all social medias, but Instagram is my jam. So come and say hi to me there. Um, that's where you're going to find resources. I have some programs to help you from the beginner stage to more advanced where I work with a holistic functional practitioner and he does all the body testing. So I'm a huge believer in you can do all the mindset, emotional work, behavioral, spiritual work all day long, but if you don't actually address where your body is at functionally, you're going to just continuously repeat the cycles just because you have anxiety and you could shift your habits and your beliefs. It doesn't mean that your liver and your nervous system and your gut health hasn't been affected and might actually be causing a lot of the anxiety you're facing. So that's why I've collaborated with Dr. Jacques Moser. And so he takes care of you in that. And then if you're a coach and you're growing your business, you're in your first to third year, you're really looking to develop your technical skills. Crisis management is one of the things that I truly believe every single coach should understand and know and have in their toolbox. Uh, You know, we're facing an epidemic of mental health, as everyone says. And so crisis management is one of those things that really has to be a foundational skill that you understand uh, to be able to support people moving forward. So I have a program that is based on the development of skills and business, but most importantly is all about networking. Truly, I'm sure Amy, you know, your network is your net worth. And so I have a program through RileyJune.ca, which is my secondary company. And either way, honestly, just come say hi. Let me know what you're taking away from this episode with me and Amy. And let's just start a conversation. I love connecting. I love chatting. I love supporting. And my DMs are truly always open on either account. Oh my gosh. I love it. And yes, networking is one of the most powerful ways to grow as a business owner. And it is in through collaboration and networking that all sorts of opportunities will appear. It's just crazy. And I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, Riley June, thank you so much for taking time out of your crazy busy schedule to connect with our listeners today. It was truly an honor being here with you. And I'm just so grateful for you having me on the show today. Thank you so much, Amy. Oh my gosh, the feeling is completely mutual. And until next time, stop dreaming and start taking messy action. You've got this. Are you loving what you're hearing? Do us a favor and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss an episode. 